Hi everybody. I hope this video finds you uh, well and not just surviving but deciding that within whatever limitations we face that we have an opportunity to flourish because there are some things that no one can take from us. One of those is knowledge and understanding and we can decide how we want to behave and what we want to do with ourselves. Those comments are not random ones. I want to talk to you a little bit about the next form of therapy, which is Gestalt therapy. We finished the uh, section on existential therapy or counseling, and that really is about meaning, isn't it? And Gestalt therapy is in this group of person-centered and existential and those three are really sometimes called the phenomenological therapies. And by that, they mean that the, uh, the, the, the therapies are focused on the frame of reference that is the client. The client is unique. The client is the one who is uh, seeking help. The client is in charge. The client is responsible for their own lives. And we, we talked about the combination of freedom and responsibility in existential counseling. And now we're going to talk about Gestalt therapy, which is originated by Fritz Perls. But I want to tell you right away that his form of therapy is, uh, his original form of therapy, the way he did Gestalt, was much more confrontive. Uh, some people thought it to be uh, aggressive. And modern forms of Gestalt therapy are not the, not done in the same ways that Fritz uh, did did it. Um, the good thing about Gestalt therapy, if you like learning techniques, is that it's loaded with techniques. It's loaded with techniques. And sometimes these techniques can be used in other forms of therapy. Okay? So you could substitute into other ways of doing counseling or therapy and and, and they can be useful depending upon what will be best for the client, of course. So let's talk a little bit about, um, about what the goals for Gestalt therapy are. One is that the, the therapist is attempting to help the client become acutely, immediately, in the session, aware of what they're experiencing internally and what they are doing behaviorally as they interact with you, the counselor. They don't want to talk about uh, childhood trauma and the origins of their pain. They are going to be encouraged to be that um, uh, uh, hurt child, perhaps, to, to act out sometimes uh, those facets of themselves, because what they believe is that if the clients distance themselves, cut off from themselves parts that are difficult to accept, parts that have had bad experiences, parts that have, have become things they don't know about or don't, ex don't want to know about or, or, or don't, don't accept is really the best way to say that. So we want clients to be more self-aware, more unified, so that they're ready to grow. They become, in the words of, of Fritz Perls, unstuck, yes? So we help clients become aware of feelings and, and behaviors and impulses that they have disowned and feelings and ideas and values that really are not theirs, that they have taken on, that they have introjected is the right word, taken on from other people. So I've listed a, uh, a video of Fritz Perls from the 60s doing therapy with guess who? Gloria, I want you to see what it looked like originally, and then, uh, if, then on your own, I want you to find examples on YouTube, and there's lots of them, of people using certain Gestalt techniques in modern times, very recently. Some of these are role plays, and a few of them are actual. And I want you to find some that are actual, and maybe even some role plays. Get a sense of what you're doing uh, that's now different than the way you'll see Fritz... Uh, perform his uh, his act, if you will. He was uh, he was seen as somewhat of a narcissist and someone who was liked to be on stage and uh, and and so this is this is uh, this has to be taken um, uh, as a piece of information to 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 make sense of it. So 
what you're going to see is that Gloria is getting a chance to be frustrated. Frustrating a client is part of Gestalt therapy. You want them to be motivated to find a lost potential, a lost part of themselves. And you're not going to explain, you're not going to provide insight to, to clients. You're going to help them become aware instead of their inconsistencies. So with Gloria, she covers up her fear and anxiety with smiles, and Fritz talks about this. They become aware of things like the games that they play, and you, you may know this, we all play a little some games, yes? Okay. And, and, and how she really avoids her fear and how she, how she couldn't get past some of the impasses. The first level of impasse he, he called the phony layer. He saw, he saw the personality and the way, we, the way we protect ourselves in terms of layers. So, so psychopathology is cured by, by becoming aware of and reintegrating the parts we've cut off from ourselves into the whole. W-H-O-L-E. This is a holistic approach. This is not a me mechanistic approach that Freud would have taken, no. So it's process as opposed to content, yes? So, you know, we create the atmosphere that is accepting and encourages their growth. We are energetic. We are, we are in the present. We address all conversations directly. We use I and not it or you. We help clients make those shifts in their language. We watch body language as cues to what someone is experiencing internally as opposed to what they may be saying to notice any inconsistencies. Yeah. And what we're trying to do is help people make real, real, substantial contact with other people. So in other words, think of it this way. When you interact with people you don't know, you have layers that you're not letting them see. You're, 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 there is a false front. And, and further, at a deeper level, there are layers we protect ourselves with, yes? And Fritz was keen to notice this and focused in this therapy on breaking through those over time in the therapy process through increased self-awareness to, to show clients that they... They didn't have really substantial fears, actual fears that are borne out by trying to, uh, by allowing themselves to go beyond those protective layers. Yes. Okay. So you're going to show really if you are making a mistake. You're saying, I mean, you know, of course you you would in any form of counseling, but you would you would show your boredom. You would show your irritation. You would show your impatience, whatever it might be, you would, you would, and you're going to frustrate that client. You're not going to protect them. Here's the operative idea. You're not going to protect them from their own discomfort or from their responsibilities. Okay. So you're going to ask questions. Okay. Um, so what, what is your, what is your jaw saying to you right now? Uh, what, what your, your foot is moving very rapidly. Um, if your clenched jaw could speak, what would it say right now? Exaggerate the clench in your jaw. Clench, 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 clench. Now what would it say? Yeah. So I would have shown you a slide, uh, which you can now look at, of uh, a... a uh, a Finnish study, F-I-N-N-I-S-H, um, that psychologists did, and uh, and they took a group of people and uh, gave them a neutral or black silhouette, and they showed them to evoke certain emotions, uh, pictures on a screen, and then they said, well, where in your body and to what intensity do you feel these emotions? And then they would mark on this uh, this silhouette. And what you'll see is a great deal of consistency that they uh, provided in where people felt within their body these emotions. And this has direct relevance to Gestalt counseling because it isn't the case that everybody feels these emotions in different parts of their bodies. Yes, there's some differences, of course, but there's a lot of consistency. So if you look at the silhouette for happiness and love, they're very, very similar. 
as you might expect, the Silhouette for Love has an increased level of uh, intensity in, in response to the images that evoked a loving feeling in the genital region, whereas happiness does not have that. Okay. So, so what, what we want to do is note that parenting, which he had some important things to say about and things that you really would know to be true otherwise, that we don't, we don't really don't want to spoil children. We don't want to create pathways that are too easy. They don't frustrate children. So, so we don't want to create a situation where children can't solve problems for themselves and can't tolerate frustration and difficulty and waiting for things. We don't want to do that. We don't want to play games because if we spoil children too much, he said, they play games, they act helpless, they manipulate, and they allow us to think they can't do things when in fact they can. So what happens to kids who are spoiled, for example, is that they, they need to be supported by others. They need to be protected by others. And, and that's, you know, the rest of the world doesn't provide that for kids unless they involve themselves in relationships with highly codependent others. And of course, that's one of the things that, that may happen with spoiled children. Anyway, I'm oversimplifying this and I recognize that. So the other is issue that he talks a lot about is um, anxiety and how it appears in, in people in the form of a of psychopathology and, and of course this is pretty straightforward that people who are neurotic they have a lot of worries about themselves in the world live in the past worry about the future they plan 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 worry 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 and those kinds of things and you know of course worrying serves no essential or useful purpose it just doesn't it doesn't work it doesn't help it just makes a person miserable it it really doesn't um, alleviate um, pathological guilt at all um, even though we may reward people in our culture for worrying, particularly women. So the power is in the present, and we want the present to serve as the functioning, healing uh, time, is the present, okay? Now, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, 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 techniques, okay? And they include... A number of things. One is called making the rounds, and that's done in group gestalt counseling. Another is the reversal technique. And the reversal technique is where you role play with a client the opposite, yet yeah, they take on the opposite of symptoms and behaviors that they suffer from. Okay? So they, they try the very thing that they're fraught with anxiety about, which has become submerged or denied. And then and that becomes clear that they're more aware of what's happening inside them and the parts of themselves that they've pushed away. And then we have the, re the rehearsal exercise, where they rehearse things in groups, usually. Um, to reduce stage fright, for example, the person um, is going to fear they don't do it right or that people are going to think poorly of them. Um, what you want to do is, is allow them to do that and encourage their spontaneity and and, and, and what, what you discover immediately about anxiety, by the way, I'll just throw this in there. Anxiety is actually a very thin layer, you see. It, anxiety wants you to think it's this bottomless pit, and it's not. It's a thin layer. And so we can think of this more broadly, though Fritz Perls didn't say this, that the very things that you want to do and to be in yourself are on the other side of a layer that's very thin of anxiety, see. So once you move through that layer, you discover anxiety is not that thick layer. It's not a, an abyss, a, pot, a bottomless pit. No, it's a very thin layer. And you crack through it by going into it, not, not pretending it's not there or that you, you are helpless to do anything. You, that doesn't work, right? Okay. Okay, so in some ways, Gestalt therapy is really about exposure at least in some of these exercises. There's an exaggeration exercise where you exaggerate a nonverbal movement um, uh, that, that calls you to become more aware of things uh, and so on and so forth. There are a number of others staying with the feelings and role playing and dream work and psychodrama. With that, I will say, see you later and bye. <laughs>